Welcome to Layton Ali Talks TV. I'm Layton Ali and I talk TV. I specialize in reality dating shows such as Mary at First Sight, Ready to Love, Love is Blind, Love Island, and The Ultimatum. So if you like to watch reality dating TV reviews, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you agree with anything that I have said, go ahead and comment below and let me know if I was spot on with my review or give me your honest opinion and feedback. Well, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and discuss Married at First Sight, Denver, Season 17, Episodes 1 through 12. Now, this particular season has been dubbed the worst season ever. Let me tell you why. Because we started out with five couples and we are now down to one and a possible. Yeah. <laughs> We're halfway through the season and we are already down to one couple and a possible. You may ask, how? Well, let me go ahead and explain it to you. Let's start with couple number one. The wedding day, Michael and his runaway bride. Michael makes it down to the altar. He's waiting for his bride. She's taking forever. By the time she gets down to the altar, she says to him, I just can't do this. I can't marry a stranger. And she chooses to completely end the process right then and there. And it leaves him at the altar. We don't know who this woman is. At first, I thought this must be, you know, a scheme that they set up in order to keep the show spicy. It is season 17. I'm sure the ratings are not the same as it was in the past. Maybe they're trying to, you know, get people talking about the show. And I really thought that this was fake and that this was just a stunt. However, people are saying, you know, you can see that when all of the uh, women went to their bachelorette parties, there was a brunette um, that was with them, but you don't see her face. You just see like the side of her head or the back of her head. And it was a lot of editing. They didn't show that much of the bachelorette party because they had to edit her out. But yes, um, we have not seen her face. We don't know who she is. I'm sure... Somewhere online, someone has tried to figure out who she is, but at this point, we do not really care. Um, I don't blame her for not wanting to do the show, but I just wish that she would have figured that out before walking down the aisle because that really did hurt Michael. So we are down one couple already. So we went from five to four and it was just the wedding days. Okay, now let's move on to the honeymoon. Laura and Orion, Lauren is black, Orion is Native American. They both were open to dating people um, of different races and different cultures. And unfortunately, that did, that did not work out well for them. So Lauren made an insensitive comment or joke and Orion claims that he could not get past it. And some people think that Orion just wasn't attracted to Lauren and I, I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but I do think that him not being able to get past the quote unquote joke, I think that that was just a, a, an excuse, to be quite honest. Um, he also slut shamed her for saying that she was intimate with someone two months before, like right before uh, they started filming, I guess. Um, Maybe like two months before they started filming, something like that. And he, and he feels like, well, the minute that you are, the minute that you apply for the show, you should have stopped dating. And I feel like that was some BS because I apply, you know, for jobs all the time or you can, you can apply for anything. It doesn't mean that you're going to get chosen. I'm sure there were hundreds of people who applied for the show and only 10 people got chosen. So it's not fair to put your life on hold. If you happen to meet someone and it works out and then you find out that you've been chosen for the show, you have the right to say, look, 
I met someone and I want to see where this goes or break it off with that person and continue with the show. But I wouldn't put my life on hold, especially because you really never know what's going to happen with these shows. And it, it just, it's just, it can be a lot, but I would not put my life on hold. And I guess he expected her to do that. And he claimed, he, he didn't like the fact that she did that. And to me, it's just like, you just, you just look for reasons to be unhappy with someone. And that was just immature. And that's not how you can um, succeed in a marriage if you're nitpicking at people and not giving them any, you know, grace or understanding. And, and we've heard that phrase a million times <laughs> when it came to Lauren and Orion giving grace. I don't even want to say it anymore. Um, let's move on. Okay, so that's two couples down. Um, after the honeymoon, they decided to go their separate ways. Um, Orion chose to end the marriage. Lauren wanted to work on it. But, you know, there's nothing that she could do. He was done. So we are now down to three couples and we are just (laughs) uh, going into week two. Okay, so the third couple, um, Emily and Brennan. Brennan claims that no one in his family has ever gotten a divorce. So it's super important to him that this works and that he doesn't believe in divorce. And he said that like a million times. (laughs) Okay, Emily has never been in a relationship. She's consistently getting ghosted. Um, And this is her first real relationship. Now, I will say this. Something may have happened. It's just so much that we don't know, of course, because a lot goes on when the cameras go down. But Brennan is obsessed with his image on TV. He's obsessed with how he appears on TV. He doesn't want to appear to be the bad guy. Um, He doesn't want to say anything negative. He wants to watch what he says. Now, I can understand that because there are people on these shows and we're just like, what the heck? Why would you say that on national television? Yeah, but it's it's giving inauthentic and he doesn't realize that, you know, you have production that's editing these things and his edit... I think it's coming across very bad. It, I mean, he is... The same thing he was trying to escape is exactly what is happening. He does have a bad edit. He he does not look great on TV because we later realize um, after the honeymoon, he tells Emily, oh, I don't want to um, move in yet. <laughs> Now, after the honeymoon, everyone, all the couple are supposed to move into an apartment that is, you know, given to them by the show and they will live together there in their marriages for eight weeks until decision day. And he decided that he was drained from Emily and he needed to go back to his personal space. And that let us know right there, something is very wrong. And Emily had stated that he is being a little cold. He um, just will not really speak to her and tell her how um, he feels. So he later reveals that he is not romantically um, attracted or he's not romantically interested in Emily. And that's the kiss of death. And we're done. (laughs) We are done. He is not interested in this woman in that way. And when a man is not interested in a woman that way, it just never changes. For women, it can seldomly change. Um, women are more open-minded. If a man, you know, treats them right and shows them love, that attraction could grow into something. Possibly, not all the time, but uh, you don't really see it in reverse. You don't really see men. Saying, well, I'm not attracted to her, but she's such a nice girl and yada, yada, yada. So let's, let's stay together. Like that just does not happen. So he is closed off. He is barely talking. When they ask him how he feels, he says, I don't know. I don't have any feelings. When she says something, he says, same, same. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. She will not speak up for herself. 
She doesn't want to rock the boat. She goes along with everything that he says. She's pretty much being the quintessential um, submissive wife in a way. And that would be great if this man was actually leading you and cared about you and loved and respect you. But it's not working out for her. She doesn't want to rock the boat. She doesn't want to say anything on camera that will possibly upset him. I mean, it's it's not working out. She keeps making these um, weird faces, scrunching up her face, and she's not really asserting herself and seeing how she feels. But in the past uh, couple of episodes, she's now trying to, she's just getting really frustrated and she's she's speaking out. And then we saw that, according to her, he decided to go back home, I believe, or you know, not really speak to her. And now he wants to just work on friendship as if a marriage, <laughs> you know, is about friendship. Okay. So pretty much this couple is done. So they go ahead and just stop getting on our nerves and just call it quits. They're not going to work. It's, <laughs> it's a wrap for them. We're really just waiting for them to pull the plug, you know, get, get the permission from the family and pull the plug, unfortunately. Sorry, but this, this is DOA. Did I arrival? All right, so we are three couples down and two to go. All righty, let's go to Claire and Cameron. Now, this couple, it's a lot. It's it's a lot. Claire is a a therapist in training. She is currently in school for therapy. Um, I think she needs, I think she has quite a few more classes to go based on her behavior on this show. Cameron, whew, uh, (laughs) Cameron, he... He started off this the show very rocky on their way to the airport um, for their honeymoon. He refused to, um, re- he wasn't really walking with her. He walked ahead of her, left her. She was struggling with his with her bag. She re- he refused to help her. Um, there were just very rude comments that were made. And I don't know if <laughs> she just couldn't get past that. I don't think that that was the, the issue, though. Um, but she has never said she was attracted to him and she likes to speak for the both of them by saying things like, oh, the romantic interest isn't there for us. But that's a lie because he has told us several times on camera how attracted to Claire that he is. And we have never heard her say it back. He has said um, to the group, Claire is the best woman I've ever been with. She's smart. She's sexy. This, that, and the other. Pretty much, he really likes her. She doesn't like him. And the best thing that she could say about him is he's smart. Now, she is in school for to become a therapist. And he owns a carbon bike um, shop where he fixes, um, you know, like carbon b- mountain bikes and all that stuff. And she pretty much disrespected his job, you know, pretty much just saying like, oh, you know, are, are you passionate about what you do? Do you like what you do? Of course he does. Like he was talking about it like nonstop and he seemed very excited. So it was like, why would you ask him that? Like, no, I think it's her that didn't like what he did. Um, but I think she just thinks of it as, oh, he just fixes bikes. But he owns a bicycle shop. He he loves bikes. That's one thing to, you know, love bikes and love riding. But it's another thing to make that um, your career, to own a business where you can do what you love. I think that that's amazing. Also, um, if you don't know anything about mountain bikes, and most people don't, and that's fine, but mountain bikes cost thousands of dollars. And they definitely, I'm sure, cost hundreds or more to fix. And they live in a state with mountains, Colorado. Hello. <laughs> so I would think uh, Cameron's business is pretty good. And he he compared uh, fixing bikes to being a surgeon. You know, sir, you're doing a little bit too much there. But I think that he really does like what he does, loves what he does. And she looks at that like almost like that's not good enough. And that's what it was giving. <laughs> okay. Um, she's also said things like, um, you know, it would be weird if you walk up to me and if, you know, if we 
you know, were to kiss each other, like just walk around and decide to stop and kiss each other. And like he, she goes, yeah, wouldn't that be weird, right? So she likes to speak for the both of them. When she discusses her lack of interest, she doesn't just put it on herself. She likes to say we when it really, in fact, is only her. And Cameron told her, no, it's not an issue for me. I'd love to walk up to you and kiss you, but he doesn't want to get me too so he cannot do that. And whenever she's with him, she gives the energy of like, I don't want to be here. Um, he tries to like put his arm around her uh, chair, you know, if he's if she's sitting next to him, things like that. But she almost pulls away and this woman clearly is not interested in this man physically. And that's fine. But it's like you're not even trying And this is the thing that kills me about these shows. You know that there is a 50-50 chance that you will not be attracted to the person that they choose or the person may not be attracted to you. You have to have an open mind. You have to be somebody that is willing to look past looks and to figure out why the quote-unquote experts put you together. And you have to give it a real chance. But these people... They think, you know what, I'm just going to go through this process for eight weeks and I'm calling it quits. And we can see that as viewers. We can see that you're not trying, you're not invested, and you're doing this just for the cameras. And I feel like that's what, that's what Claire is doing. They were, they were having issues. And um, Claire, it's crazy because she's a therapist. And it's like, I would think you would ask more questions. So uh, Cameron has said uh, several things, such as when he was 10 years old, he asked questions and he was pretty much put out of the Catholic church, something to that nature. And I would have been like, okay, what did you ask? What were your thoughts in regards to religion back then? So he also said that he does not want to raise his kids um, to be, you know, in a particular religion. Claire was like, okay, I agree, but I I disagree, but that's fine. Um, I respectfully disagree. And she didn't continue. She didn't elaborate. If you're a therapist, you should be asking things like, okay, I respect your opinion, but are you open to possibly changing? And are you open to our kids, um, uh, me exposing the kids to religion and then giving them the right to choose once they become a certain age, you know, these are the questions that you ask, but you don't immediately just say, oh, religion is an issue for us. And that's that. And I believe that she tries to use that as a clutch, as a crutch, I'm sorry, to pretty much um, bring the relationship to a close or just she wanted something tangible in order to focus on the fact that she's not attracted to him. Uh, She wanted to focus on well, it's the religion thing. Can't do it. Can't do it. Like, no, that's not, um, it's not like it's the, the end of the world. People can change their religions. Um, people can start off being very religious. Something may happen to them in life and they choose to fall back. I mean, these things can change. And a lot of times people become closer to God because of a, you know, a very terrible situation that they may get out of and they become super religious after that. So I just feel like it's not the end of the world. And if you truly came into this process wanting to work things out, you would realize that, especially if you're a therapist. But anyway, (laughs) um, they decided to call it quits. Uh, Cameron was pretty much over the fact that Claire wanted to just be fake for the cameras. And I will say, this is what it looks like now. We still have more episodes to go. I may change my mind. More things may come out. I may become Team Claire. But at this moment, I feel like she's the main problem in this situation. And yeah, even the fact that they were having these problems... She wanted to go ahead and celebrate their one month anniversary. And he said, no, I don't want to celebrate with you. He went and celebrated with someone else. And he said, I'm going to be around people who like me. He was not going to be fake for the cameras, but she was willing to. It it was just weird. 
So they do go to a group dinner and they decide they both want to get a divorce or separate or whatever it is. And that's that. So that's four couples and we are down to one. But this last couple here, <laughs> uh, Becca and Austin, it's not going to work either. So Becca is agnostic. She has endometriosis as well. And another um, like autoimmune um, disease. However, we haven't seen it, you know, be an issue um, that, you know, yet as far as the show goes, as far as filming. So they're like a month, over a month into filming now. We haven't seen it be a major issue for her yet. So that's good. Um, Austin, he, okay. This, I, we don't really know much about Austin. See, now that I think about it, um, so Becca is a photographer and we saw her in her element, um, uh, taking pictures of Austin's friends, family, and she did such a great job. It's really hard taking family photos with small children because of course children do not always look in the camera. They don't always want to smile. They can be fussy, sleepy, in a bad mood, but you know, you have to try to get them to, of course, smile and get that money shot. And she did such a great job with the kid, um, with uh, both kids, really, because there was a little baby as well. Um, the family, his friends, Austin's friends really liked her. And, you know, that that's good when you can get in with get, getting good with the friends, show that you are good with kids. That's awesome to do that. You know, that's a two for one right there. Um, yeah, but Becca, I think she's a really nice girl, fun personality, pink hair, all of that seems super cool. Austin, we don't really know much about Austin. So it has been over a month in the relationship, in the marriage, and we see them always together, always kissing. Becca has stated how, you know, handsome she thinks Austin is. She can't stop kissing him, hugging him. Um, when they sit together, they're super close um, you can like see that there is attraction there, that there is chemistry there, but the harder conversations regarding religion um, have to be brought up. They discussed it. Uh, Becca is agnostic. Austin is Christian. Austin told Becca, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. And she was crying. She was upset. And it was just like, why would you say that? I wouldn't say that to anyone. <laughs> You know, I just, I'm at a point in my life where I respect religions and I am open to other people's understanding other people's religions. And I'm not going to say anything like that. <laughs> like, that I, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just say that, you know. Um, but in regards to religion, I, I just feel like yeah, it's a serious topic, but we're not going to act as though there are people who have different. I, my great grandparents went to two different churches <laughs> like they were OK with that. I think one was Catholic, one was Baptist. Now, that is pretty much very similar. But to me, you can you can find common ground, but you cannot make someone feel bad about their religion, about their religious choice. But I just feel like, you know, I think he may be using that as a crutch to try to, you know, mm, mm, cause issues. Because even though they are lovey-dovey, always hugged up and kissing, Austin does not want to have sex. Now, it is weird because, again, they are married. Um, they are both always super lovey-dovey with each other. Um, it's really rare that you see men don't want to have, don't want to be intimate, especially someone who is in his early 30s. Um, you don't see that very often. It's usually the women who want to take it slow and they're not ready. But here's the thing. You're on a show called Married at First Sight. It's an accelerated eight-week process. This is not the process where you want to take things slow. This is the process where you move very, very fast. Okay? So if you are someone who's like, look, I don't, I don't kiss people right away. I don't like to be intimate right away. You shouldn't go on this show. Point blank and the period. Okay. Um, but it is weird. And Becca, 
she had a surgery like right before the show started filming and she could not be intimate. She had to wait a few weeks. However, she's ready and able and willing and he is not. And I think that that is a bit weird. And as time goes on, um, in the next couple of episodes, we're going to see her pretty much say, I feel like you're not really attracted to me or I feel like there's an attraction issue because why else would you not want to be intimate? Now, I know there could be a ton of reasons. And let's say he has some kind of an issue um, down there or, you know, in that area. Becca seems like a really nice girl. Becca has, you know, an auto, like two autoimmune diseases that she is dealing with. She is someone I think that would be understanding if he had an issue, like a medical issue. And he, you know, may not feel right discussing it on camera, but it's something that you have to tell your wife. I mean, I feel like some of these people really forget, like you are married to this person and you do owe your your partner um, a certain level of transparency at this point. Now, no one's saying that, you know, you have to have sex and all of that. But at least speak to your partner as to why it's not happening. However, there are rumors online about um, what's going on with Austin and the truth behind why he may not want to be intimate with her. And I don't know if those rumors are true. There were other rumors the beginning of the season about Lauren and why the the marriage ended. And we realized that that's not true. So I don't want to speak on those rumors, but those rumors are going to continue to come out and be circulated because most people find, you know, if he's not interested in being intimate with her, there has to be a reason why. So people are going to believe these rumors because this is unusual circumstance. So yeah, that is the last couple and they do have a religion issue and they are not um, having sex. So (laughs) one couple and a possible, um, the only possible couple will be the new couple. So because they are pretty much only down to one couple, um, They decided, okay, let's rewind and go ahead and give Michael a new bride since his first bride ran away. They have paired him with a woman named Chloe. Stay tuned and watch my next video so I can tell you my thoughts on Chloe and Michael and why I do not think that they will fit and that they will work out. Alrighty, so that's one couple and a one couple and a possible and Honey, this is a mess, okay? Um, we are through with the first half of the season. We have quite a few more episodes to go, and I just don't know. I don't know where it's going to go, but this season, this show, it's a throwaway at this point. But anyways, I will be doing weekly recaps of all of the episodes going forward, so stay tuned for that. But expect my video on Michael and Chloe to come out um, pretty soon. So go ahead and tell me your thoughts on the season so far, all the episodes. Why do you think we're down to one couple at this point? Um, What is going on? I think I'm going to also do a video on what I think about production and the experts in casting, okay? Okay. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Leighton Ali Talks TV. And this was a recap of Marriott First Sight Season 17, Denver. First half of the season, episodes 1 through 12. Bye for now.